Hey friends, thank you for giving me your time. And in this video, which is episode six of Chef, what's the best way? We're gonna answer the question, what's the best way to cut cheese? I'm taking it one step further and I'm gonna talk about some safety concerns as well. If you were searching for the best knife to use when cutting cheese, this video would be over in 10 seconds. Softer cheese, thinner blade. Harder cheese, thicker blade. Now I'm also gonna be talking about tips and techniques for cutting a large volume of cheeses easily for gatherings or parties with the best possible presentation. But before I get into that, did you know that how you cut the cheese you purchase can impact your health significantly? No doubt some of these store-bought cheeses are impossible to open. I mean, even the ones that offer convenient packaging aren't terribly convenient. And so you cut through the packaging. Never ever do this. This is Brian, really nice guy, but Brian may be the fifth or sixth person handling that loaf of bread. Maybe Brian dropped that bread when he took it out of the box, or maybe Brian just returned from a bathroom break. How many customers touched your bread or cheese before you got your hands on it? The purpose of protective packaging is to keep what is harmful in the outside world from entering the inside world. So if you cut through the packaging, it's grabbing contaminants from the surface of the packaging and inserting them into the cheese. You know what cheese is best known for? The multiplication of bacteria. And cheese tastes best at room temperature. Guess what temperature bacteria loves to grow at room temperature. I mean, even if you carefully slice the edge of the packaging, chances are the knife is going to pierce through and embed itself into some part of the cheese. So what do you do? Just wash the package in the sink under warm, soapy water. That's it. And also don't forget to wash your knife. This is a good idea to do with all of your fruits and vegetables as well. Washing your hands with soapy water eliminates 96% of all contaminants. Why not wash your packaging? But then you have another problem. What chemical contaminants are you introducing to the packaging that could get into your cheese, fruits, or vegetables? On the market, there are safer commercially available soaps and alternatives. You can use more natural disinfectants like hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and baking soda. One brand that we switch to in our household and they do not sponsor this video or have ever sponsored any of my past videos is Charlie Soap. Since we switched to their laundry detergent, not only do our clothes come out cleaner, we no longer need to use dryer sheets. And it's cheaper per load than most of the familiar big brands you're aware of. Charlie Soap also makes a great surface cleaner. Links to their products are in the description. And while you're down there, leave a comment. I do a lot of catering and sometimes I have to make cheese platters for parties of 100 people or more. The cheeses have to be bite-sized and they have to look perfect. How do you do that? Some say it's best to use a really sharp knife. Some say it's better to use a dull knife. When you use a dull knife, you're pushing through the cheese and leaving a distorted or jagged edge. It's also likely that the tearing motion will cause a softer cheese to pull apart or a harder cheese to crumble. When you use a sharp knife, what you're doing is actually splitting molecules. That fine cut will cause the cheese to stick to your knife. The cheese is smoother, so it sticks to the knife almost like a suction cup would. As you take the cheese off of the knife, it will also likely fall apart because it's stuck to the knife. Plus, stopping to remove the cheese from the knife every time you slice through, it's time consuming. The best of both worlds is to use a sharp knife and keep the blade hot by cleaning it off in hot water. Most cheeses have a very high fat content, so a hot knife will cut through them more easily. Just make sure you wipe the knife dry before you use it. You will get quite a few slices done before you need to reheat and clean the cheeses off the knife. Another tip is to keep soft cheeses as cold as possible before you cut them, otherwise they'll warm up and stick to the knife. Now, earlier I said that the softer the cheese, the thinner the knife, the harder the cheese, the thicker the knife. When you heat up a sharp knife, you can use a thicker knife on a softer cheese, but do not use the thin knife to cut a harder cheese. The knife will bend, it could get off course and cut you. Many people become enamored by cheese slices. Other than a grater or maybe a slicer, all you need are good sharp knives and a bucket of hot water. And one of the first videos I ever did was how to easily sharpen knives at home. So a link to that is right over my shoulder. That was a few years ago. So I'm going to be releasing a new video about the latest ways to keep your knife sharp. Now, if you subscribe to my channel, you gotta make sure that that notification is turned on. That video is gonna appear as a suggested video for you and it's gonna be a good one. Please help my channel grow by hitting that like button. And if you could, please share this video on Facebook or Reddit or whatever your preferred social media platform is. Cheers. Cheers.